بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد When you logged in you locked in all these platforms that we engage with we need to be cautious people presume they claim that they are free but in reality when somebody is a prisoner to social media in a world without privacy how can you be free how can you be free when every movement is tracked every conversation is recorded every text is used and can be used against you So don't expect any company, any organization, any government to protect your privacy. This is like literally asking a peeping Tom to install your window blinds. Asking a peeping Tom to install your window blinds. So people haven't realized the value of privacy. Once you've lost your privacy, you realize how valuable it is. So the ball is in motion to consume the privacy of humanity. Shaitan has set the trend for the appearance of Tajal. Either or, we get caught in the system and if not, when it does crash, there's no other options. So Dean has encouraged, Dean has highlighted the different forms of privacy. Woman, satara, musliman, satara, allahu, yawm al qiyamah. Whoever conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his faults on the day of qiyamah. So, Concealment is important. If you should conceal the faults of your brother, why are you not concealing your own faults? Why are you not embarrassed at the flaws and promote it on different platforms? So this concealment is, is a bunyad, it's a foundation of deer. لا يستر عبد عبدا في الدنيا إلا ستر الله يوم القيامة. A bunyad, a foundation of deen. Even when it comes to Jahannam, the Rewaid mentions, من استطاع منكم أن يستتر من النار ولو بشق تمرة فليفعل. If you can have a parda, a sitter, a protection, a veil between you and Jahannam, then even if it may be one date, use it, create it parda. So this parda, such a parda that will preserve us, such a veil, such a cage, such a force field that will protect you from all angles. We need to be creating this. In the olden days, they had castles. The castles, the castle walls were built very high. The doors secure, because once you breach the castle walls, there is compromise. So the engineers developed a way of protection, and the invaders looked for a way to breach this. Nowadays, we don't need an invasion by default. When you expose yourself to these platforms, you already breached illa mashallah. So Quran highlights this concealment, this privacy. Ya Bani Adam, qad anzalna alaykum libasa. We have indeed sent down to you clothing. Why? You wari so atikum warisha to cover your shame for beauty and adornment 
So that's one aspect. But with that clothing, what? Parda, what libas do you need? Walibasu taqwa dhalika khair. That clothing that guards you against evil is the best. So what parameters have I set up so that evil is inviting me, ma'asiyat is inviting me, the internet is inviting me, social media is inviting me, my friends are inviting me, the norm, the trend is inviting me, all these platforms are there inviting me to compromise. Now, do I have a counter attack, a counter strategy? Allah SWT is saying, Taqwa is your counter strategy. So wear the clothing of Taqwa. The Mufassirin explains, Libas refers to clothing that is used to cover the private parts which is called your Satr. And Rish is the outer adornments that are used for beautification. So one is you got your primary satr and then you got your secondary covering. So the first one we would call it essential and the second one we would class it as complementary. So like how in your clothing you've got a primary and a secondary for our deen also, we need a primary protection and a secondary protection, a complementary protection. So when it's very cold, then according to the need, you've got complementary protection. But that complementary protection is no more, no more complementary based on the need. A person goes to war. So now he doesn't suffice what is primary protection. He moves on to a secondary level, a tertiary level, higher. Even in the tertiary, there's different grading. So B4, B5, B6, what level it is? Double A, triple A. Different levels of protection based on the need. Now, currently, our Iman is at risk. And it's not a war, it's war upon war upon war. Everything out there is to distract a believer. A person could be just doing an average Google search, but the result will be something opposite. So one click search, they've populated certain details, second click gone, slotted. Game over. It's so simple, it's so easy. Whole family gone just through one click. So, thus Libasu Taqwa, Dharman ibn Zayd ibn Aslam under this ayah, commentator mentions when one, a person fears Allah, the Taqwa, then Allah covers his error, subhanAllah. So, it is a form of sitter, it is a form of protection. So that's why Quran speaks about this libas, because the taqwa is a protection on its own. But how far has shaitan taken us down the line that here the mufassirin of the past are saying Allah is covering your flaws and faults. We intentionally expose our flaws and the flaws of others. Alam ibn Kathir has mentioned a point also. Anzalna alaykum libasa, yani al matar al such rain that the produce would be cotton, etc. Or rain where animals survive on and you will get the different types of hides from animals which you will produce clothing. So like how it rains and from the rain we have items that will protect us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends rain, the libas of taqwa, then that libas will be sufficient 
to protect a person from the different fittings. So we need to draw this clothing of Hidayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these platforms alone, one click, a person swipes yes, has a relationship, entire marriage, compromise, children, divorce. So relationships, it's, 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 it's increasing relationships, it increases promiscuity, it increases adultery, fornication, it increases a lot of evils. It increases your, your, your followers, your following. So a person wants to be followed, fall. That can cause a person to fall when you want to be followed. So a a a ummati a a kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijid lin nas a representative of Allah and His Rasul should be inviting to Allah and His Rasul. Now a person wants to maintain relationship. He doesn't draw the line. He wants the following. He wants the numbers. He wants the popularity. He wants the earnings, he wants the fancy comments, it comes with a price. That's why Ajib Hazrat Malana Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahimullah Mujadid Millet used to say, there is peace and contentment in restricting relationships and contact with people. So in the Medan of Da'wat and Hidayat, you will go to humanity. But in the Medan of preservation of your Iman and Akhirat, then you will restrict your relationships and contact with people because it's just gubshab, it's just ghibat, it's just finding faults, it's just and in the past you would directly speak to people. Now it's on, on platforms, 100,000, 200,000, 300 people on one chat and uh, it, it, it is destructive. So when it comes to privacy, we shouldn't take a chance, we shouldn't take no chances. This is something which is a no-go zone. It was like a lawyer who contacted his client and he was overseas. So he said, you know what, something urgent and important. So he said, what's wrong? He said, your mother-in-law passed away in her sleep. So he said, oh, that's so sad news. So the wife wasn't there, so the lawyer asked him that uh, I, I just needed to know if you're going to be back in time because we needed to order the burial uh, uh, processes, so we, for the burial do you want to bury her, embalm her or cremate her? So the husband looked around, he seen the wife's not there, so he said, you know what, please take no chances take no chances, order all three, order all three. So privacy is like that, take no chances. Some researchers in Nanjing University in China, they, they, they want to do, do research with regards to technology and how indirectly you can access information. So now we know, okay, GPS is on, satellite technology, data, hacking, etc. But even on other gadgets on the phone may compromise your privacy. So for example, they took the accelerometer. So it's a chip in the phone which will determine the orientation of the device. So when a person is holding it and it will orientate based on the mode that you choose, landscape or portrait. So these are chips that are very sensitive. So they access the accelerometer and based on the readings of this meter, when a person was using the subway, they could pinpoint his exact location because Obviously, the subway lines have a route, they have station stops, they have a distance, they have a map. And uh, after the whole experiment, there was a 92% accuracy rate. Means if you had to go in a subway where normally there would not be GPS. 
and you could lose a person, you just needed to activate the accelerometer and you could pinpoint, imagine, you could accurately pinpoint exactly which train they boarded and which train they are going to disembark based just on that one gadget. So different technologies are out there, police recently are looking at automated license plate recognition and uh, plot the movements, certain countries they've got cameras where they plot your movements, they profile you, but that's, that's just a warm up, that's, that's, that's outdated, there's more advanced tech out there. A person rents a car, he pairs his phone to the car. All your contacts get transferred. People are not particular about that. Information compromise. So the cars of today are like PCs. They're literally a, 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 a computer, a tablet. When people sell their cars, all the data is recorded. Now, a person doesn't delete all that information. So somebody has access to that sometimes. Most of the time, a person deletes all their data, but that information is still accessible when police forensics need to track any person. Sometimes they don't even use the tracking system, but there is ghost trackers on the vehicles that monitor in the movements. And that's how many people were apprehended when they got into the GPS tech. Look at Tesla, their privacy policy is they'll collect your speed information, odometer reading, battery use information, battery charging history, information about the electrical system, software versions, infotainment system data, safety related data, whether it's your SRS systems, brakes, security, e-brake system, vehicle performance, and on and on and on, and this is all done remotely. This is the printed policy. So they've got access. So from Uber to Tesla, where big companies now are sitting in a godlike position, if we can use the word, and 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 uh, abusing this power, and you will be blackmailed. Most of the time a person wants something, just clicks yeah, accept, accept, accept. But you don't know what you're accepting, except your destruction. You accept, accept your destruction. So blackmail you, you, if you do not accept our privacy policy, then it doesn't move forward, the screen doesn't go on. You're not a, a, a system, automatic software updates, security fixes, you're going to need all of this. So if you don't, it comes with a price. Researchers have done some research and at one stage they found that uh, Tesla had a one-factor authentication system. That means you can access the car remotely, means a third party could come, uh, crack the password, get the API, locate your vehicle, log into the vehicle, get all the information, mon forget monitoring, control your aircon lights. If it's possible, any person could be trapped. I mean, this, 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 the, the, the possibilities that you hack in and, and, and cause certain things to happen, then, then Allah protect one and all. There's a new feature called Couch Summon. So you can remove the car out of the garage, it'll park itself. And uh, these, these systems, they now react to based on, 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 on accident triggered uh, sensors. So like black boxes in, in, in aeroplanes, you've got black boxes in cars. Somebody recently met up in an accident in the US they were saying that the, the data immediately of the accident was recorded, the footage was sent to the insurance company. They had no access to anything. They had no access to anything and you have to wait. So eventually you'll be held liable for a lot of things. So it's a basic 
the signal between the car, the cloud, the app, and you log into the app, then uh, you become the target, and uh, eventually a person can unlock the car, uh, control the engine. So if somebody does do that as well, then uh, you could access a car, steal everything from inside, get away, but there's no braking. So uh, you get this Tesla key fob, so the transmitters can block out the key. So you can deactivate access to the car completely. You don't want a person to get in, you could do that. People plant certain things in cars, so a person wouldn't even know in, if, if they had to scan the car under for a detonator. Now a person, it, it, the, the, the possibilities are endless. Get into a person's car, do whatever you need to do. Assassinate him without anybody knowing also, no the billah. So we we we're going into an era of 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 variables which are unlimited. So one one researcher built a device, he called it own star. So it, it impersonates the vehicle network. So you just put a, a device, it's got a magnet attachment, put it under the car somewhere. And uh, it accesses the, the wireless system. It, uh, it's got an access point. And once you launch it, you can exploit the vulnerabilities of the car completely. So this is complete remote access. Do what you need to do. Pull your gadget away or it's hidden somewhere. Nobody will find it or nobody can track it as well. So future monitoring systems will come in where any vehicle in, in an entire country They'll know exactly where it is, who's in it, how many passengers are in that car, which destination they go in. If a certain thing happened at a certain place, can activate certain things, deactivate certain vehicles, uh, block an entire network of cars so that person cannot get away. I mean, the, the, the possibilities, forget that, just the self-driving cars as, uh, is, a, is, a, is a more worse scenario where... They say now that uh, they will not even need parking lots anymore. Your car will just uh, drop you off and move around or people could have a city where cars just park and move and take you to your destination. You don't need to own a car. So literally, although it seems like a easy situation, but uh, what will happen at a time and who will use it against you, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. The amal for today is man salla fi masjidin every salat in a masjid for th salat with the jama'at arba'ina laylatan 40 days la tafutu rakatul ula min salat al-isha and he does not miss the first rakat of salat al-isha katab Allah lahu biha itqam min al-nar salvation from the fire of jahannam is written in his favor, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to make an amal wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.